This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. One of the interesting facts about the Apostle St. Thomas is that almost all of his evangelization took place outside of the Roman Empire, and most historical sources that concern his travels are non-Western. There is substantial historical evidence that the Apostle St. Thomas made it to India, what is modern-day India, possibly as early as A.D. 43, where he preached the gospel and converted people. Quote, it is almost the unanimous opinion of the fathers that Thomas preached the gospel in India and suffered martyrdom there, end quote. Dr. James Kuriki Lamkat, First Voyage of the Apostle Thomas to India, Ancient Christianity in Baruch and Taxila, page 26. Fathers supporting this position include St. Jerome, St. John Chrysostom, St. Gregory Nazianzen, and others. The early church historian Eusebius says that St. Thomas went to Parthia, which included northwest India. There is also a tradition that after his death, the body of St. Thomas was brought from India to Edessa. Early church father St. Ephraim says so and thus supports the position that St. Thomas evangelized in India. Quote, Edessa had the mark of distinction of possessing the body of the Apostle Thomas that had been brought from India. Ephraim mentions the translation of the body of the Apostle from India. We read there the lamentations of Satan thus, quote, The Apostle whom I slew in India is before me in Edessa, end quote. Dr. James Koriki Lamkat, First Voyage of the Apostle Thomas to India, page 12. It is also the strong tradition of the Eastern Church and the Malabar tradition that St. Thomas evangelized and converted people in India. Quote, Tradition has remained consistent ever since, and history knows no better document than consistent tradition. It states that St. Thomas landed at Cranganore in the year A.D. 52 in search of the Jewish colonies along the coast, and that he founded seven churches among them and among Brahmins. He arrived at Palliur, a village a few miles from the sea, found there a temple surrounded by tanks, and in one of these he came upon Brahmins bathing. He performed a miracle, converted the whole temple clergy, who in turn converted the temple into a church. Now this is a perfectly consistent tradition, and it is not enough to read it in books. One must go to the spot to feel the full force of it. End quote. A. Geel, Christianity at Home, page 14. The Acts of Thomas, a collection of ancient apocryphal works with some Gnostic elements, have quite a bit to say about the travels of St. Thomas. Since these works were apocryphal, that means that the Church did not consider them inspired, doctrinally accurate, or part of the biblical canon. However, the designation of apocryphal does not mean that these documents did not have any historical truth to them at all. The Acts of Thomas mentioned a king named Gondofares, quote, the king of India, who was supposedly a hero in the region of India and converted by St. Thomas. This king, Gondofares, was known only in connection with stories of St. Thomas the Apostle. However, in the 19th century, coins and other archaeological evidence were discovered, bearing the name of this king. This was a remarkable discovery, and this evidence proved that King Gondofares really existed in history during the time and in the region described by the Acts of Thomas. Quote, Thus the argument so far is clear. There was mentioned the name of an Indian king in the narrative of the story of the Apostle Thomas in all its versions, and this king was known only in connection with the Apostle till the discovery of coins bearing his name in 1834 and the subsequent findings in northwestern parts of India. Now we know that there existed a king named Gondofaris in India, and he was an Indo-Parthian, which explains his Iranian name, who had his capital at Taxila, and who ruled over a vast domain from 21 to 51 AD. End quote. Dr. James Kuriki Lamkat, First Voyage of the Apostle Thomas to India, page 74. Sources also indicate that St. Thomas went to Taxila, King Gondofare's capital, the main city in the region, quote, and when we think of the other apostles, who had also made their first destinations great centers of learning and culture, it is no wonder that the apostle to India selected the greatest center of learning and civilization in that epoch, Taxila, as his destination in India, end quote. Kariki Lamkat, page 84. 
According to the Rabin Song, a collection of Indian traditions, quote, between AD 52 and 59, Thomas founded seven churches and baptized one king, 40 Jews, and some 3,000 Hindus. Like Paul, Thomas also had great success in cities and towns. Between AD 62 to 69, Thomas and his disciples are reputed to have baptized more than 17,000 Hindus, end quote. See Bernard Ruffin, the Twelve, The Lives of the Twelve Apostles After Calvary, page 133. St. Thomas is also said to have worked numerous miracles and ordained priests and bishops. In addition to the stories about how St. Thomas allegedly converted thousands in India, another interesting story concerns how St. Thomas is reputed to have raised a boy to life and then baptized him. Quote, A Brahmin priest, to spite Thomas, killed his own son and accused Thomas of putting a spell on the boy and thus ending his life. Thomas brought the boy to life again. After the child testified that it was his father and not the holy man who had done him in, the apostle asked the boy if he would rather live in this world or that from which he had just been summoned. When the boy replied, quote, the other, Thomas baptized him and the child died, end quote. See Bernard Ruffin, the Twelve, page 132. Thomas was the disciple who asked Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? To which Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 5-6. St. Thomas the Apostle made sure to carry that message of salvation as far as he could in order to bring as many as possible to the true faith of his Lord and his God.